test. No, right? Now? Now? Yeah? Oh, okay. So <laughs> it works? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, then. Not okay. Let's, let's start and let's try. Maybe one thing first, because I'm still a bit afraid of COVID, so maybe if the people around who have a mask, Wear that, I would be really thankful because I can't have one. But you don't have to leave, so if you don't have any, it's fine just because the room is quite full and I don't feel too comfortable with them. Thanks. Then let's start. This is my session. One does not simply walk into a management position, and what I learned on my journey from dev to CTO. And what I will not talk about in the session, just to manage, ex manage expectations, I will not talk how you become a CTO. Um, because I think the definition of a CTO is really different from agency or company to company, right? So if you have a Drupal agency who works with Drupal mostly, does this sound weird? Or is it okay? Yeah. Um, if you're a Drupal agency and you work mostly with Drupal, then probably your CTO will have some deep Drupal knowledge. If you're working in a company with a lot of different technologies, then probably the CTO just have a rough overall vision about the technical things that are happening. Maybe the focus of CTO is more on consulting or defining the strategy of the IT within the company. So I think that differs a lot, so it's not so easy to talk about how to become a CTO, especially because I only have my perspective, so I just work in this one agency. I can only, only talk about this one, so I think it wouldn't be of much use for probably the rest. What I will talk about is my professional journey, and then I have identified or tried to identify some areas that play the role throughout my professional journey. So they were relevant throughout all steps I was making to different extents, so some were more important, important in the beginning, some were more important in the end, but I think they are rather generic, and so I hope that you can also take something from this. I'm Ela Meyer, I'm the CTO at Kokomora. Um, Kokomora is an agency for marketing, UX, and IT, and we have our headquarters in Frankfurt. We have like 180 people, we are having offices also in Poland and Spain and a lot of people working remotely. Um, I'm also coming from, not from Frankfurt, from, but from Mainz, what's, what's close to Frankfurt. And yeah, about my, my professional journey. So I studied media informatics and while I was still studying, I started to work as, at Kokomor as an intern. I was writing my master thesis there. And then I started with my first full employee contract in 2016, uh, 2006. And since then, I'm always staying with Kokomor. What might be a bit unusual, but for me, it's totally fine. And <laughs> throughout this way, first I want to say, I was never somebody who has planned her career really. Like some people probably do this, that they know, okay, in three years I want to be there, in five years I want to be there. And in order to reach this, I need to do this step, I need to do that step all these things, and that was never what I did. So for me, a lot of things happened accidentally, and they were not really planned. Some things were planned, but also rather short term. And as you can see here, I had a lot of different roles during the time. So I started as a PHP developer, then we started to work with Drupal. <coughs> I don't remember the name, and I forgot to look it up, but it was with Drupal version 4, so it's already some, some years ago. Um, I worked then as a Drupal developer, and then I had a lot of positions that were not clearly, clearly named, and we called it manager of software development. But in fact, I think it was were roles like solution architect, technical business analyst, um, ITPM. So always being the person connecting development and management and clients and account management, um, but never really so clearly to grasp. In the meantime, I also took then over more and more responsibilities. So I started to be responsible for the Drupal team. Then I was responsible for the software development team. Then I joined our executive board, and then in 2020, I became CTO. So I have mentioned these, these impacting areas in the beginning. And these are the parts that I have identified for myself that they always make me struggle at some point and play the role. So first is making a decision. The next one is being an introvert. 
then we have quite comfortable comfort zone that was not that easy to leave. Um, being a woman also played a role because in tech especially you're always kind of a minority and of course the people around me. So in the following slides I now just want to go through each of these aspects and then always tell how it affected me. What I think if you're in a position that you want to do next step in your career and you want to, do, want to have a new role, what you could maybe do to navigate through these things a bit easier but also what you can do if you're a manager or a boss, how you can help your people to get a better deal with these things. So let's start with making a decision. Okay, so um, you all know this, when, when you have new roles, a lot of new responsibilities are popping up, right? So you're doing something, and then, for example, you're becoming the lead dev. In addition to just, just be a developer, you suddenly have to do time estimations. You are responsible for the project. You're the contact person for your technical or for your dev colleagues. And a lot of things are happening that didn't happen before. Maybe you need to write concepts or define architectures, tasks like that. If you're then becoming a technical manager, suddenly you have some responsibility for people. You have a team to deal with. You need to maybe hire these people, do recruiting have budget discussions because you want to hire freelancers, all things like that. And you also probably get more into contact with some other department around. So when you're doing projects um, with other departments like design or whatever, you will probably have more interactions there. And then if you do another step, you become yeah something like executive director, CTO. The task, the task grows bigger again. So you are then leaving your, your safe IT space, but then you're rather connected also to the other, other areas of your company. You are more involved into finding a strategic vision of your company. You need to find, um, you, are have, you have other budget discussions because it's always more in the, in the scope of the whole company. And the more of these things are coming up, the more complex it will get to make a decision. And I often felt like that, that I had like two people hiding in my head, right, always saying, okay, I want to do that, but if I do that, I also need to do this, and do I want to do this, can I do this? And it really wasn't that easy for me. Um, and some of the decisions I, I always had to do, or I had to make throughout my journey, one big one was, do I want to give up coding? And maybe some people can relate, right, if you're the um, developer, and then you're maybe taking over other tasks, so you're the one who's joining the client meetings, you're maybe the one who has the project manager and all these things. And suddenly I ended up to be the main contact person for everybody in this project, and I didn't find time to, to code anymore. We planned me at the beginning, like, okay, you do 50% of your time, you can do coding, the rest you do the other stuff, but in the end I only found time to do coding in the evening after everybody left and, and left me alone. So I reached that point where I, needed to make this decision. make this decision and it was not an easy one for me because I, I like to code I think I was good at it um, but yeah I, there was no way to combine both things and um, that was one thing another topic that was really hard for me was how to put a name tag on what I do and as I said I had many roles that were somehow in the middle and that were connecting people and we in Germany we, we say girl for everything what's maybe not the nicest expression but it fits somehow and I had a lot of discuss discussions with my former bosses. Um, they were always like, okay, Ela, but what do you want to do? And I was like, yeah, but I'm doing something, right? And it's needed and it's important. So why do I need to discuss how you name my role? I don't care. Let me just do my job and I'm fine. And that was not that easy for me to navigate through this and then find out what I actually wanted. wanted. And then especially towards the end, the, the last career steps, it was also hard to decide if I can handle the responsibility and do I fit in certain positions, can I come up to the expectation that people around me have. Um, so if you're now in this, in this same role that you say, okay, I want to do something new, I want to step up, 
what are things that you could do? Ah, not coming through here. <laughs> so, first of all, um, this makes me nervous. <laughs> first of all, I think it's important that you are well informed. Um, you should be aware what roles are out there, and all you know should know all aspects of a role. And this can even be that you don't only focus on the roles you're currently having in your company, but you could also have a look around, right? Like look at job portals, look what other companies are doing, talk with colleagues um, from other companies to see what roles are there, and are there maybe some roles that might fit to my needs? Um, you should also check then, as I said, all aspects, because sometimes it's not obvious, sometimes only some some tasks with, uh, within a role are visible to the outside and, and the rest is rather hidden because it's internal processes. Then, of course, think about what you want, about your strengths and your weak points, but also what, what you're interested in and what you're not interested in. Because it doesn't make sense if you invest in improving your weaknesses if this is a topic you're really not interested in at all. Y you won't have any gain from that. It's also important, I think, to be honest to yourself. So don't think, okay, I want to become a manager. I don't like to deal with people, but well, that's part of the job, so I will just do it. Because in the end, probably you will not be happy, and the people in your team probably won't be either if you have no fun if in, in leading this team. And also, especially when you go maybe up into the higher positions, don't assume that you need to know everything in a role. So I had really some doubts when I had roles where I felt like, okay, now I should be the person <laughs> with the deepest, deepest Drupal knowledge in the room, for example. But it's not like that. So there were always, especially when you stop coding, you're, you're getting out of this business, and then there will be people who know more, and that's totally fine because you work together and they are part of your team. Um, what you should ask for, so especially your manager or your boss, it's clear role descriptions and career paths. They should, of course, help you to find your interests, and they should also be open to find options that match your interests. And as a team lead, again, the career paths are important, and there I think it's really important to be detailed. So just don't just write, okay, lead the team, but put what is behind there. So what is it to lead a team? It's, it's yeah, doing recruiting, it's having, I don't know, resource planning, put people on, on projects, find freelancers for this team. All these things are part of this role, and maybe that's not visible to the people who are interested in the role. So I think it's really important to define these career paths in a really detailed way, so everybody knows what is it about. And also important, I think, is that you should offer different paths. So it might happen that the only option you have for somebody to get step up is that you can become a manager, but that should never be the only option. So if somebody is a really good developer and he wants to step up and he wants to be promoted, or she, of course, sorry, um, then there should be an option for them also if they don't want to manage the team. So maybe that can be like a software architect or something like this. But there should always be alternatives so that people don't have more than one option. And you should be open to adapt the roles. So if you have maybe the perfect candidate for a role, it might make sense, sorry, you have the perfect candidate except in one issue, for example. And we had this case once with somebody leading our creative department. And he, he was really good in that, but he was really bad in organizing the team. <laughs> so then it might still be an option to find then somebody who helps this person in, in doing this part they are not good at. So it can be perfect match, right? So the person, our creative director was then really good, he could do the creative stuff and he had somebody at hand who helped him with the other things and this other person felt also well with this. Um, no, sorry. Yeah, and together with the team, you should to help them to define their role and um, to get a realistic perception and you should be honest with them. So you shouldn't promote, pr shouldn't promote people just to make them happy because nobody will win anything out of this, right? If you don't think this person fits and you don't see a way how to improve it, in the long run, I think it doesn't make sense if you put them in a higher position. Next topic is getting out of your comfort zone. And the comfort zone is um, defined as a zone where you can do your work in a quite easy state because you know what to do, nothing unexpected is happening, there might be a lot of things coming, so you still might feel some stress, but it's always some kind of work that you have under control. Ah, sorry. <laughs> but um, it was found out that there, to, to reach the optimal performance zone, you always need to be in a slight level of stress. So if you want to learn something new, and I think you can relate, 
if it's something you, you don't know yet, you will feel somehow stressed. And that's totally fine and it's totally normal because then you will reach your optimal performance level. I'm sorry, I'm always clicking in the wrong direction and I don't know why. Um, but be careful because you also have the danger zone. So as soon as you overstep this, stress levels are getting too high, you might feel really anxious and then you are not productive anymore. And this is a good example what I felt in the beginning of the session, so <laughs> that definitely was the danger zone. I hope that I get slowly to the optimal performance zone, but I think I'm not there yet. Um, yeah, about me. So getting out of my comfort zone definitely meant coding, and you can also see here, it's, it's always good to have a boss that slightly pushes you in, in one direction, but ideally not too much. Um, some other topics besides stopping stop to code was like doing time estimations in the beginning of my career That was something what really stressed me and it made me crazy when my bosses asked me to do time estimations um, Joining client meetings is also something I I'm really not the happiest to do so yet I'm quite used to it, but still it's not my favorite thing and there are still pitches or things that are really important and really big where I definitely need to get out of my comfort zone as I just mentioned, holding presentations is something I really don't like and no matter how, <laughs> how big or small the setting is, so I always will get nervous about that. But practice helps a bit. And also like giving direct feedback to people. So criticize people talking about unpleasant topics is also something I, I still need to learn um, and that's always like feels like getting out of my comfort zone. Um, as a team member, so you have now made up your mind and you know what you want to do in order to get a new role. And then of course you also need or you will know what you need to do, what you still need to learn and to improve. And then therefore you should define the goals, how you can get there. And, and these goals will lead you out of your comfort zone, but it's really important that you define small steps and you don't want to do everything at once. Like now I was doing the presentation at the DrupalCon, Ideally, you start to have a small presentation in your team with some internal knowledge sharing. Then maybe you can have a presentation with your whole company, with local trooper groups, with, inter uh, national, with national trooper groups. So just do it step by step and don't do everything at once. Um, avoid to get into the panic mode. So if you feel really overwhelmed with something, don't be afraid to talk about it. So if you think, okay, this step was now too bad, just take a step back talk with your boss about it and find other ways how you can reach this goal. And don't lose your goals out of sight during daily business. And I think this also happens quite often. That also happened for me now. I wanted to do some presentation training before the con to feel a bit better, <laughs> to feel a bit more safe. But everything was so stressful around that I didn't manage to do this. And I think that also often have happens if you have these goals that it's easier to stay in the comfort zone because you know what to do, right? And then you just do your daily work and, and you don't care about the goals. So try to put them down somewhere, ideally with your boss. Um, that's also the next step. Um, keep track of them and ensure that you really follow this path. Ask for feedback from your boss, but also from your colleagues. So if you're doing something you didn't do before or that's new from you, you can only improve if you get feedback from people. Ask also for training. So if there are bigger things coming up that you're not used to, they, there should be some training budget and the company should be interested in, in helping you to improve this. So this is totally legit to ask for that. And also really important to ask for a fallback option, I think. So like Trees mentioned tomorrow in the Trees note, right? That should always be a two-way door. And, and I think that's the same here. It should always clear, but for both sides that you can step back. So if you don't feel comfortable in the new role, it would be stupid if you had to leave, right? Because you have been good in your previous role and then if you say, okay, this is all too much, let me return to my role and then we can maybe find other options, that's fine. But it should also be the other way around. If your boss thinks that you maybe not come up to this and the things are getting too complex and too complicated, then it should also be an option to say, okay, let's take one step back and then see if we find another way. As a team lead, um, yeah, provide trainings, don't forget soft skills. I think often, or at least that's something we experience, we, we focus on rather training on a real technical matter, for example, but we forget that we should also do trainings for team lead, for doing presentations, communication trainings, conflict solving. So there are a lot of things around, especially if you're stepping into manager positions where it could make sense to, to really have some trainer joining the company and, and help to learn this. 
Um, you should have an open failure culture, and therefore I think it's also important that you as a boss also talk about your own failures, your own failures, so that people know that it's not bad if something is not working at first. And together with your team members, as I said before, you should try to define the goals with them. Um, you should split the goals into small steps. I think it's helpful to push people a bit. So for example, I had, I remember the first Drupal events, I never wanted to join because I was afraid of people and I, I was scared about these meeting so many new people all together. And my, my previous boss back then, he was like, not saying you have to go there, but he was so sm uh, slowly pushing me in this direction and, and that helped a lot, right? So I think some small pushes might be good, but don't try too hard. Um, yeah, and ensure that the team understands your reasons behind these goals, so it doesn't make much sense if, if you have some plans for the people and they don't understand where this is coming from. So why do you suddenly bring them in an uncomfortable situation, right? They always should understand the reasoning behind that. And provide feedback. As said before, that's, that's really important that people can grow. Next topic is don't let being an introvert stand in your way. And there are studies that say that one of the biggest barriers to step up the career ladder is not a lack of technical knowledge or experience, but it's rather that you're an introvert, you're lacking self-confidence, or you're suffering from imposter syndrome. And this study, I won't go into details, but you can see there that the general population is split into half and half between introverts and extroverts. And you can see the further you go up the, the career level, the less introverts are around there. So even from the first step, mostly extroverts will be promoted and will take over higher positions. <coughs> What's the problem? Yeah, and that's again me before the, the presentation started, right? I think if I had the ring, I would have put it. Um, and I've been dealing with this since always, so I was always too quiet and too shy still in school. I remember in Germany, I don't know if it's everywhere like that, but we have um, crates for written exams, but also oral crates, and my written notes were always really, yeah, really good. My oral crates were really, really bad, so <laughs> I was always failing as this, in this. And now also at work, a lot of people um, in my team, but also colleagues from other departments or other directors are louder, they are more aggressive, and it feels harder for me to not be overlooked, and it's not that easy like it seems to be for others. Um, but luckily, there were people who still saw some potential in me, and I think this is really, really crucial, and that's really where the managers play a big, big role. So I had my boss back then who, who saw that, even so I was the quietest one in the team, and there was not much telling about what I did or how I did my work, but he seems to have realized something in me, right? That I was good in this position in between, that I could good talk with people. Also, I was so shy, but I managed to, to get um, zusammenhang, the connections <laughs> between things. Um, so he, he put me in this manager software development position, and, and that was a really important starting point for me, and I'm always wondering what would have happened if he hadn't done this, because, yeah, that was really lucky at this point. And I think... Yeah, the role of the manager of the boss in, in this position is really important. Um, for yourself, and I know that it's easily said, right? Believe in yourself and be open if you have doubts or worries and voice your ideas and expectations. Trust in yourself and your capabilities. But if this problem is really, really strong, you should also try to learn more about the topic. S because, yeah, there are a lot of articles, books, everything, and you can get help outside. So if you really suffer from being an introvert and you are not able to express your feelings, and it's not like, yeah, now I believe in myself, of course it's not that easy, right? So and if you have the feeling that you could need some support there, try to get the support. And you should ask for, um, you should always ask for what you want. So you shouldn't expect people to just assume that it is like this. And I had this also in many com conversations with people on my teams where I was like, yeah, why did you never tell? And they were like, yeah, I thought it was clear. But it's not, right? So often it's not clear. Maybe also your manager or your boss is too stressed out and they don't realize things. Or maybe it's not that clear for them because there are always different perceptions even on the same point. So say what you want and, and tell that to people. Um, Ask for support if you have the feeling that you need to get out of this introvertness. 
ask for the space and the setting you need. And what's also important in my opinion is that the goal is not to make an extrovert out of you. I think we introverts are fine and we should of course get to a point where we can communicate, but it's not the goal, at least not for myself, to become the, the queen of small talk somewhere, right? So it's not the goal that you're suddenly entering a room and are, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the English words, but you know what I mean, I guess. Um, as a boss, as I said, I think it's really important that you have a look on the quiet ones and don't overlook them. You should check that you not get blinded by people who can just sell themselves really well, because I think that often happens that people who are good in selling themselves and what they are doing, they are also perceived as people who do the better work, and it's often not like that. Um, you should provide a safe place for the people, and you should also talk openly about yourself, doubts and worries to, to give the people in your team the better feeling and make them understand that they are not alone. Um, together with a team member, you should ensure that the quiet people have the chance to, be to talk and to be seen. You can do this, for example, if you have like recurring meetings where everybody's saying something that you maybe really put a name behind this person who's saying something so that each week, each month, somebody else can say something. Or like classical ways doing retrospectives, right, where everybody can give their opinion so that you don't risk that there are people in your team who never say anything because they just feel fine like that, but then their voices get lost and I think that would be sad. Um, you should define goals that can be measured to compare people's work so that you don't run into the trap that you think always the best selling person is delivering the best work. You should recognize people's accomplishments because usually extroverts toot their own horn, as you say, and introverts don't. So if they don't tell about what they are doing good, then you should tell about, about it. So that also other people in the team recognize, hey, this people is doing good work. Uh, he or she is not talking about it, but they are doing something of value here, and I think that's important. You should establish feedback processes, and there, um, for example, we started something um, that we had 360 at the end of the year where we asked the people to assess themselves and also to um, the colleagues from, from the IT department but also people from other departments they work with together. So then you get really feedback from all areas and that often comes out that the people assess themselves worse than the rest of the team assesses them. So it, it really shows that people often think from themselves that they are worse like they actually are. And, and this kind of feedback really helps also the people, I think, to get to see how others see them and maybe also get some more self-esteem. And you should adapt your behavior. So if you know that somebody is an introvert or need more their time, or need more time, then maybe don't call them or run to the desk and ask for something immediately, but rather send them an email, say, look, I would like to know that and that. Can I come by tomorrow? Can we talk tomorrow? Can you answer me per mail? Just give people some space if you know that they need it. Sorry. Then, being a woman or part of a minority. <coughs> I mean, I, I can only talk about being a woman here, right? So I think some of these cases apply then to being part of other minorities, but also being a white woman still is quite privileged, so I will really focus on this being a woman part. And there are studies again showing that um, at entry level, women and men are quite equal, but then as soon as you step up even to the first manager level, there are less women promoted than men. And that of course then has an effect for the whole development because the balance will always be unequal and will just get bigger and bigger the further you get up. I wish it would always feel like this, to be the only woman in the group, or maybe just some. Unfortunately, it doesn't, <laughs> but I must also say that I was in general really lucky. So with my colleagues, with my, my bosses, um, in general, I always felt well. I never felt discriminated or anything. Maybe in the bigger setting, I sometimes have the feeling that there's more pressure on me, but of course, I cannot validate if it's because I'm a woman, if it's because I'm introvert, or if it's just my perception, but that's something some I sometimes feel. I also have the feeling that I'm challenged more often, so I have been in meetings with clients that have an IT department, with other agencies, and then people hear that I'm the CTO and I'm saying, okay, I'm not that deep into the technical topic, so if you want detailed feedback on that and that, please, we need to ask our developers. 
And I get tons of questions about technical details. And I can always just say, I told you before, I cannot answer that. And I'm not sure if this is because I'm a woman or if these people are just not nice people, but this, is, this happened more than once. And then this is something that feels not that good. On a smaller scale, I'm, I have the feeling I'm interrupted more often. I often had, especially in the beginning, to do things that are not directly, directly related with my job, like taking the notes in meetings. That's often <laughs> the woman that is assigned this task to. If there's a birthday that needs to be organized, some event, if there's a conflict within the team, Ella can solve this because, hey, you are the girl. No, right? And then this is really something that's, that's not nice to experience. And my favorite example was my first Drupal event I joined, and the first question I got from somebody I didn't know was if I'm the girlfriend of one of the developers, and that was really frustrating, but that was already some years ago, so I hope that this wouldn't happen anymore. So if you're a woman and or part of a minority, um, if you recognize bias, then you should talk about it, and you should point out discriminating behavior. Um, you should find an alley and people like you. Something that's similar like before, like tooting your own horn, talk about your successes so that you're more visible and people see the value you bring. Talk also about your feeling if you're not comfortable in situations. So I mean, sometimes there were meetings when I was the only woman in the room, it really felt weird. And then if we had the next meeting in the session, I just asked to bring somebody from another department just to bring this person there so that I don't didn't feel like the one person that's sticking out just because I was a woman. So I think that's totally legit to, to think about something like that. Um, again, if you feel treated unfairly, it's like with the introverts, you should ask for measurable metrics to, mess your uh, to measure your progress. You should ask for actions and consequences. So when you're complaining about something, don't let anybody play these complaints down, right? It doesn't help if you go to somebody and you say, hey, I feel discriminated by this and this behavior, and then your boss is saying, yeah, this person is always like this, ha, ha, ha. No, that shouldn't be, shouldn't be like that, right? So that should be consequence. And at least somebody should talk with this person and point this out. And you should get support. So from your boss, if your boss is not helpful, then from HR or from other senior colleagues, if you have the feeling that you don't get any support from anybody in your company, then I would say it's probably not the best place to work at. As a team lead, um, you should build a diverse team. So the more the diverse the team is, the less the people will be a minority and the less that will be an issue. And um, for doing this, I think it helps to add different perspectives to the hiring process. So bring more people that maybe belong to this minority, even if they are not dire directly from this team, but it can really help to bring an additional um, perspective. Also do like ex assessment centers so that people have to fill a case or something that you then just can put next to each other and, and see how people perf um, perform and then decide who might be the best fitting person without having bias. Um, ensure that people are e treated equally and support minorities. Also important, flexible working environment. So at least in Germany, we, we still have this issue that um, a lot of women stay at home more often to take care about the children and they cannot come back full time to work. And then it's really hard to find positions that might fit them and that keeps them at some career level. And one option, for example, is what, what we did is that we said, okay, there's a role we need to fill quite a high level role, let's just put it with two women who work half time both because they are at home to care about the children half time, but they can totally find fill this work together. Of course it's a little more overhead, but but still you can do something to make things possible possible for people. Also if like I for example I started to work only eighty percent some years ago, three years I think. So even before I became the CTO, and still I had the option to become the CTO at, at Kokomo, which was really good, I think, because it's not natural that you get these things. And it really helps you to make people happy, to keep good people, so try to be flexible. And as mentioned before, avoid the typical pitfalls and don't assign to women always the housework that happens in the office. Um, I think I mentioned more or less everything like that. Don't play complaints down provide metrics and provide feedback. And the people around. There are again some studies saying that um, interpersonal relationships play a really big part, nearly like 40% about how 
happy people are in their job. And there the relationships with management are the biggest role and then the relationship with the co-workers. I would not really see that for me the relationship with the management is the most important, but the relation with the team is, is equally at port, um, important as well. So without the team, I wouldn't be where I am now, and I'm really, really thankful for the people there, and a lot of steps I wouldn't have done then if I wouldn't have known that the people will support me and that they will have my back if I want to, to apply for this role or ask for this role. So yeah, a team is important, but also, of course, the bosses. Um, and I was lucky with many of them, as I mentioned before, like my first one they recognized, but also others recognized my abilities and they pushed me in the right direction, but in an amount that it still felt comfortable for me. We also had bosses that I wasn't that happy with, but in the end it also helped in some way, right? Because you can realize what you don't like, what you would different, and at some points, at least for me, that was like giving me the final push to to ask for a position. So when it was about leading the software development team, we had somebody who maybe didn't fe feel that well, and for me the, the final push was then really that I thought, okay, before I get somebody else who's like that, I can do that better. So that finally gave me the courage to, to ask for something. So everything makes sense somehow, in my opinion, and that about that. The next slides. Yeah, they are rather summaries of the previous topics because people are involved in, in everything I talked about, right? So you should always ask your boss for guidance and support. You should ask for goals. You should ask for regular check-ins and feed feedbacks. But you should also give your boss feedback as well. And for once, and more important, give them feedback if you are not happy with something and if you want things to change. But give also feedback when you are happy and, and if you are satisfied with something how it's going because, yeah, bosses sometimes are happy if they get some nice feedback too. And for the managers or the bosses, have an open communication on eye level and provide a safe space, be empathetic, care about the people, provide guidance, meaning, um, but also important, ask if they can um, support you. And I think that's also giving purpose and meaning. So people are usually happy to help. I mean, of course, it shouldn't be like you're asking for help, people are doing the work, and then you pretend that it's your work. That's not how it should be. But when you're open and say, okay, this and this person help me with that, people will be happy to contribute and help you. And really quickly, just some tools we are using and that can help. Um, it's like the regular one-to-one -one meetings, and that's something that shouldn't should never be cancelled ideally no matter how stressful times are talk with the people in your team and make this time available for the people the 360 reviews i just mentioned we started to do stay interviews so we usually have exit interviews when people are leaving but then we thought at some point well we should maybe do the same kind of interviews when the people are still there to find out what are they happy with if they would leave in two years, what would most likely be the reason why they would be leaving? To really dig a bit deeper and not just have this regular, 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 oh God, <laughs> regular, um, yearly meeting um, where you talk more about concrete processes and next step, but keep it a bit more open. Um, what I mentioned in the beginning, the job profiles and the career passes and then regular trainings are also important. And that's it. Thank you very much, and if there are uh, here are the contribution opportunities, and it would be great if you can fill the session survey. And if there are any questions, I will happily try to answer them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there are no questions on the app, anybody? Thank you very much for the talk. It's, I'm um, pretty sure it's inspiration for many. <laughs> Thank you. Personally for me. Uh, I think I'm, I've been struggling with some of that and I'm still struggling with, I don't know, 70% of it. But you inspire me to keep going. Uh, I noticed that it's not easy to notice, for example, with some bias when you are not it when you are it's inside that bias, it's not always yeah. easy to know that you are uh, in that situation. Yeah. My question is, 
during your career path, um, did you consider to like change companies or change technology or make some pivots and what kept you in one company for so long? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I thought about it, of course, but it was never really concrete, I must say. So, and that is also how, how the company, how Kokomore developed. So when I started there, we've been a, like an eight people agency. So it was really, really small. Everybody was really, um, close. I was the intern for the IT, so I was dealing with the server room, I was doing admin tasks, I, I changed the back and up, I don't know how it was called, the cassettes. So I did a lot of stuff when I started and then the development was just huge. So from the technical perspective, a lot of things happened in this time, like in the beginning we all worked with FTP and suddenly you had version control, right? And so things never get boring and, and that happened throughout the, the day. The team crew, we op um, opened the office in, in Spain, what is really something, um, it's my favorite team and <laughs> no, I cannot say this, cut this out. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really, that was something, there were always something new happening that that gave me enough reason to, to actually stay there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah let me start by uh, thanking you for the talk. It was uh, very inspiring. Um, yeah. My question is, um, how do you know, um, or how do you kind of find out when you're going in the wrong uh, uh, path, and when do you know that you maybe need to take a few steps back? Uh, because it, that's not that's not you. Uh, keep yeah. Not the wrong direction. Uh, not the right direction. I think <coughs> one thing is, is the feedback, of course, from people. If you have more and more conversations where you're discussing about the direction and and get some hints how you could improve it, that maybe points out. Then for you, I think the most is if you feel too stressed and if this level of stress is permanent and you don't find a way out of this. So you go home in the evening or you shut down your computer and you're still thinking about the stuff. So that were things that kept my mind busy throughout the night, throughout the weekend, every time. And then you know, okay, maybe this is a bit too much on my plate and maybe I need to change something about that. But again, that's just personal, right? So I don't know if this is the... Thank you very much for an inspiring talk. Uh, you talked a lot about uh, measuring uh, the performance objectively so that you can level the playing field and uh, could you uh, give a few examples of what kind of uh, metrics you use yeah. for that? Uh, in fact, we are <laughs> not too, too well, so there are no general metrics. So we have, for example, like in the development team, we <coughs> take care that we do regular code reviews and, and we have these kind of things that we see that what people are, are delivering fits well. Um, in other teams, like with the project management team, I think there it's more that we see how close people stick to processes and that we do then the regular project controlling where we then find out how projects are going and then there we can realize if this is, for example, a problem we have with the project manager because they don't manage the project team well, but it's not really something too concrete, I'm afraid. Sorry, bit. Yeah, so it's uh, more qualitative rather yeah. than quantitative. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Measure it as a single value. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, nice speech, actually. Thank uh, you. To be honest, more than nice. It's a good one. My question is, um, you mentioned a lot that you're a woman. And um, in your position, like a CTO, which is uh, really high, you probably have to be sometimes a bit harsh or maybe uh, mad or maybe serious. Uh, serious when you get a decision. I mean, you should uh, have a strong uh, word. How, uh, how you're doing that, being a woman? You know, you probably, you know, here, is, here are some secrets, you know, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> No, I think it's just, I, I can be harsh and I can argue a lot, even if I maybe don't give this impression, but I'm, I'm also fighting a lot. I mean, especially for the interest of my team, of the IT, so I, I really don't shy back from any discussions or any fights also in the executive board. But that's something you really need to grow into, right? So I wasn't like that from the beginning and you just grow with your role. And then sometimes you need to really force yourself, but, but then you always mm -hmm. have to keep in mind that's in the interest for the team. So if I fail, maybe 
people on the team will have a better standing and that's usually what, what keeps me going because it, it really sounds cheesy but the team is the most important and what keeps me there because I'm so happy with them. So if I know, if I now don't have this argument, we will lose, I mean that sounds, we are not fighting, right? So we also like each other across departments but um, it feels like I will lose and then also the team will lose and that's something of course I don't want to have and that gives me usually the push to, to have these discussions and also the hard ones. Um, so you began as a developer. Um, do you uh, ever f um, made or felt uh, the need of an, a management formation or something like this to uh, to to uh, learn uh, how to uh, manage people because it's a full uh, job? Yeah, I, I think we should do, and this is something we are actually not really good at at Kokomoro, so we often hope that people just know how to do this, and with some it's working fine, and with some it isn't. But I think really that it should be it should be like that, that you have trainings for, for managing people. I mean, of course, you can also self-educate yourself. There are tons of books probably around, right? Something we, everybody reads at our company, it's Radical Candor, how you provide feedback, how you are open, what you talk about. But... Yeah, you should you should have some kind of training for that. Ideally, I would say. Last question. That's fine. Thanks a lot, all. It's really happy that you came here.